Hello all my fine aviation enthusiast friends, this is Greg, welcome to the airplane show. Today I'm not a pilot or a captain, today I'm just showing you this boring ass flight management system that really doesn't do shit. There's only a few buttons that work, there's only a few screens that work, and as cool as this motherfucker should be, it really sucks. So sit back, relax, and maybe you'll enjoy this, maybe you won't, but let's get into this. Before you fall asleep from this boring ass flight management system, please click the subscribe button, please leave a like, and please comment if you can. I certainly do appreciate it. Even though we've had this same very nice touch screen for years now, Aerofly has done absolutely nothing to improve it. So thank you very much Aerofly. You can push the flight plan button, you can push performance like I just did, Take off, climb, cruise, descend, a lot of this shit you can't change. Some of it you can, I'll go over it a little bit later. Uh, fuel, nope, no such, oh look at that, more blank screens. And the init page which we will use momentarily when we enter our flight plan. I just want to finish going through these chapters just to show you all the stuff on the screen. This one we will use, uh, VOR 1 and 2, ILS information, uh, we can input most of that ourselves if you so choose. Uh, however, uh, that really is the rest of the screens that are available. I believe there may be one more down the line here. Uh, if I'm, I'm just going to go through them all. But uh, thank you very much again, Aerofly, for uh, making this very immersive. Uh, I'm sure many of the pilots that actually fly this in real life enjoy all these blank screens as well when they're flying. So thank you very much. Uh, we do have the same type of buttons down here on the bottom. In it, performance, you know, direct. Nav, uh, radio, uh, flight plan, you know, all these buttons. Really, uh, most of these buttons don't do anything uh, other than the same ones on the touch screen. Uh, the ATC COM one, there, you can change a few things here, uh, but what's the point? Uh, because it doesn't do anything uh, to the game. It, does, it doesn't help in the simulator at all. Uh, so, you know, if you do want to adjust that, you certainly can you know, make the, uh, the, the traffic system uh, above us or below us or, you know, I, I, whatever you want to do. If you want to play with it, play with it. It's more stuff to touch and move around. But other than that, uh, it doesn't do anything to enhance uh, your flight at all. 0, 0.0. That's it, Blutarski. You're out of here. All right, let's enter our flight plan. Push the init button. Tap on the flight box there, the flight number, and we're going to type in B-A-W, because we're in a British Airways flight. Type in whatever you want there, push the enter button, and that will enter it in. Click on the from box. We are going to type in Heathrow Airport's four-digit code, or four-letter code. After that, you don't need to hit enter. You can if you want. We're just going to tap on the box right next to it. Now let's type in Madrid. And for this one, uh, we're going to push enter. Now, after that, we can enter our cruising altitude. For this, just enter the first three digits of your altitude. So, 390 is going to be flight level 390 for 39,000 feet. Now, if you push the performance page, our cruising altitude is now entered in the very top there. From here, click on departure, click on runway and we are going to leave on 09 left. Now one thing I do like is how it gives the length, the frequency, the course, uh, and uh, it would give you a transition if available. So for here, we choose our standard instrument departure, then click the yellow box down below, Tempe Flight Plan. That will enter our whole standard instrument departure and uh, discontinuity, of course, because it doesn't know how to connect to Madrid yet. Let's fix that by clicking the LEMD button. Let's enter our star, so click on star. And now, let's choose our approach there. Let's click on runway, and we're going to choose 1-8 right, which is the longest runway there, and I... Again, it enters the frequency and the course and the length and all that. Now, with these approaches in real life, the first three, there would be some differences. 
uh, with decision height and some other things, but here it makes no difference. So choose whichever one of the three you want. And via for our transition, we are gonna choose the last one there. And now we're gonna click the yellow box again, and that will put all of our arrival information in. All right, let's enter our first waypoint. Push DET, push insert next waypoint, type in your waypoint, and then push enter. All right, let's connect our flight. So click on discontinuity, click on delete, and that will get rid of discontinuity and connect our route. Let's enter our final waypoint, but we can't do it from there. We need to scroll up and then click ANG, insert next waypoint. Let's enter our waypoint and then push enter. Now I will tell you, I have only ever, ever, and if Airfly is listening, get back to me on the forums because I've put this out there and you were supposed to get back to me, but I've only ever been able to enter two waypoints. That's it. Other than that, I can't enter another waypoint. I'm going to try right here and uh, it doesn't work. So hopefully Aerofly will fix this. But if you like to enter more waypoints, you need to go back to the main menu uh, of, the, of, the game, of the simulator, click on navigation, and then go back and enter them in through the map. Now BAN, we did not type in. Click on that, click constraints, and let me show you something. Go over to the speed page and because uh, you can't do anything on this page here, go over to the speed page and let's try putting in a different uh, speed. Let's just type in 240, okay? And we'll see if it takes. Uh, I already know the answer. Uh, the answer is no. You cannot adjust the speed if it's part of a star or a SID. However, if we go to one of the ones that we typed in ourselves and uh, chose the waypoint and put it in ourselves, we can now go to constraints and we can go over to speed and we can enter whatever speed we wish. So let's choose a new speed just so we can show you. And uh, let's type it in here. So let's type in 300. Let's see if that takes. Click the yellow button and no. All right, well, let's go down. Maybe that's because that's our mock speed for the cruising altitude. So let's try it again. Let's try a little bit lower. So let's click constraints. Click speed, and now let's enter 285 knots and see what happens there. So after you enter it in, again, push the yellow box, and there we go. If you would like to select the speed that uh, the flight management system chose for us, just go back to this page, blank out those numbers, hit the yellow box, and that will put back in the original speed. That is all we can do with the waypoints in this flight plan page. We have nothing else we can do. All right, let's go over how to enter the ILS information. Click the nav radio button. And uh, well, it's good to know that the settings still don't work. Uh, I have it turned off where it puts it in automatically, but it still did it. Click on the box for the frequency. Type in whatever frequency you so choose. I'm gonna choose the one for the runway that we're gonna be heading to. Do that, push enter, or just click on the box for course. Let's type in our course, and then we will be all set. Well, not seven, but 181, and then hit enter. All right, let's push the performance button, and from here, we can adjust the V speeds, the V1, VR, V2. We can adjust the THS for the flaps. We can adjust the flaps. We can adjust the packs, and so on. Uh, you can see there it says 142, 135, so let's uh, put in a new V1 speed. Uh, it doesn't really matter what we put in, but let's just make it a little bit higher, and then let's make this a little bit higher as well. And let's go back to the altitude indicator display and see what it says. And as you can see, it has been changed. Uh, other than that, uh, I mean, you can tap on the, you know, toga button, flex. Uh, you can uh, pax, anti-ice, you can do all that. Um, but other than that, you can't really do anything else with the throttle reduction and the acceleration. Uh, you can type in a new transition altitude if you so choose. Uh, if you're going to do that, just remember, type in the first three digits. So for 7,000, we would type in 070. So climb, there's not really anything you can do here. We can't set a climb profile like you can in the Boeings. 
uh, you know, in the Boeing 777 and, uh, you know, the Dreamliner and the 747. Cruise, there's not much we can do here. You can enter something pre-selected, but it doesn't do anything in the flight plan system. Absolutely zero. Thank you, Aerofly. Thank you very much for making this super immersive. Thank you for improving this over the years. We cannot enter a course for the wind. How about that? Zero again. Here you can put in, uh, you know, the speed of the wind while you're landing. You can put in an outside temperature if you wish. You can put in the barometer here. Uh, let's type in 1015. Uh, uh, and then we can set our minimums if you so choose. Put in whatever numbers you want. Minimum, 100 above. Uh, and then uh, that's really about it. You can reconfigure uh, three, you know, configure three for landing, full landing. Uh, let's type in this transition altitude again, uh, since it wasn't, uh, I don't know why it, it went away, but let's type in zero, seven, zero for 7,000 feet. And, uh, that's really about it in the performance section. Not a very big performance, is it? Thank you, Aerofly. Thank you very much. If you are still awake, I appreciate it. Let me show you one more thing. Now, this is actually kind of useful. So go back to the flight plan, and now up here, let's switch the navigation display to flight plan. Let's zoom out a little bit, and you can actually scroll through the flight plan, something that's not available on other some other aircrafts, actually, in this simulator. So what you do is just click the up and down arrows, and that will cycle you through your whole flight plan so you can see if it is connected. So let's scroll through here, but other than that, there's not much else to this. They made no, no improvements over the years. It's not immersive. It doesn't really work that well. You can't enter more than two waypoints in. Sometimes even it won't even let you put one in. Sometimes it won't let you put one waypoint in. If it doesn't like the waypoint, even though you get it from their map, it won't allow you to plug it in. And I'm sorry if I'm going off on a little bit of rant here, but I'm pissed. You know, I'm pissed that they, they do nothing to improve this over the years. They just slap a, a new year on it, a couple new liveries, maybe, and that's about it. A couple new regions to pay for to download, that's about it. So that's about it for the airplane show today. I appreciate you stopping by. Sorry about that little bit of a tangent I went on, but, uh, you know, I I like this simulator, and, uh, and uh, sometimes I just kind of lose my cool a little bit with uh, continuing to pay for the same product over and over again. Anyways, please leave a like. Please comment. Please click the subscribe button. I do appreciate it. Thank you for stopping by and we'll catch you on the next airplane show.